It's a bear. Looks like she got it right this morning. Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar. We're commercial rare coins and precious metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the sea. Nice three day long weekend. I feel pretty rested up. Uh, as I told you on Friday, got myself a Momo cycle too. I haven't had a motorcycle in 30 years since I owned a Honda 750F, which I used to speed around on in my younger days. A um, little more mellower this, this time, and uh, bikes are a lot more friendly and easier to ride as well. However, we're not here to talk about bikes. Let's talk about fish. <laughs> One of the, wow, take a look at that. Such cool, great water clarity today. The fishing looks awesome. I saw a huge school of snook, uh, cereals, mackerels, uh, uh, snapper, you name it, everything. It's like a fisherman's paradise out there this morning. Look at the huge amounts of bait too as well. Uh, very, very cool. Uh, there we go. We're switching back to the right. You'll probably see some snook coming up. And again, we're not doing a fishing report. You know me. I just like to cover uh, some personal things. You know, I can share some things with you. I like fishing. I like surfing. I like riding motorcycles now. So, <laughs> And uh, wow, there's just so much life out there. It's just unbelievable. Uh, just hoping to catch uh, 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 sight of a couple of snook out there, but I think a school of them just went by. All right, let's move out of here, I guess. Uh, this is the Deerfield live cam, by the way. Uh, a lot of you folks have told me you've been watching this in the mornings. I can't blame you. Put on the high def, uh, blow the screen up. In some mornings, it's just absolutely gorgeous, uh, what you can see out there. Saw a hammerhead shark last week. Well, Let's take a look at spot prices and kind of, you know, it is Monday. Look, Sunday night. Uh, last night, I, I, I kind of followed the markets till about, I don't know, what, 8, 9 o'clock or something like that. I kind of looked off and on. Uh, we were in that 1820 to 1830. It was 1830, I think, was the close on last Friday. Uh, and it, it popped around 1823 last night, 1825. Uh, this morning, I got up and a uh, little monkey hammered down 12 bucks. Uh, silver, uh, 24 cents down. And uh, platinum down 10 bucks. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see what happens today in New York, seeing if there's a little pattern uh, going on here. The monkey hammering has been less and less on Fridays and uh, Sunday nights and Monday mornings as it has been like uh, little tiny wax at it during the week, it seems like, you know, 10 cents, 15 cents. Um, like, you know, there's something just trying to uh, uh, chew it down. I don't know if that's the right term to use. God, I don't work out chew, but... Uh, 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 you know, just kind of knock it down in little tiny increments, um, and then it kind of just stops from there. No major monkey hammering going on. But again, hey, listen, these idiots provide us a great opportunity to buy the real metal at uh, discounted prices compared to where uh, uh, they're going to be at some point. Uh, particularly, um, <clears throat> particularly uh, 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 in the future here. Uh, because, again, I, I, I see precious metal prices uh, are going to be much higher. And we're going to look back at these prices one day and go, holy crap. Remember when, when gold was 2000 bucks an ounce? Uh, remember when silver was 25 bucks an ounce? Uh, remember when platinum was $1,000 an ounce? I wish I had bought more. And, uh, you know, as I said, unfortunately, that's going to be the uh, uh, sentiment of a lot of people in the future. It's the same thing you think about now when you look back on uh, silver when it was uh, $3, $5. Uh, one of the uh, commenters out there the other day had mentioned he remembers trading silver eagles at 7 bucks. I remember trading them at that level, too, and even a little bit cheaper. Uh, so, I mean, think about that. Silver Eagles at $7. And we thought $7 was high at the time. I mean, you, you know how you see people saying precious metals right now? Oh, gosh, don't buy at this price. Don't buy. Uh, it's too high. It's too high. People were saying that at $7 silver, folks. And when it shot up to 10 people were, were screaming. Oh, some people were screaming. Oh, God, it's going to get hammered. It's going to be back down to 2 bucks. Get out. Get out now. Uh, and, you know, and it did drop back to five or seven. However, the thing with gold and silver and precious metals, especially in a fiat currency driven world that we're in, uh, a paper driven world, a, uh, a credit bubble, a uh, massive credit bubble that we continually put ourselves in, uh, and it's all due to fiat currencies, um, that, uh, God, where, where was I going with that? <laughs> Long winded a little bit. Uh, the the uh, effect of. Uh, uh, of all that stuff, it has done nothing but create higher lows. So when we do see lows in precious metals, they're still higher than the lows we had before. So we continue to see higher highs and higher lows with precious metals, gold, silver, and platinum uh, over the course of decades, not just last year or this year. And uh, unlike equities people, you can't, you can't take a stock and just say, 
or we're not just picking out a time period, well, gold did really well from 2008 to 2012. No, a uh, historical time frame, gold has done excellent, silver has done excellent. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme, and, you know, people haven't got rich quick off gold and precious metals. Those things happen, you know, when the metal, metals heat up and they get into bubble territory, and gold and silver and platinum will get into a bubble territory. Uh, I'm not so sure about platinum. <laughs> it does its own thing, but gold and silver will get into a bubble territory at some point, and... Uh, uh, be worth, you know, uh, people will get rich off it and make a lot of money if they're trading properly and they know how to do it. Uh, no less, it's really all about wealth preservation, and I'm not going to get into that because we talk about that every day. Uh, so markets are down a little bit today. Good opportunity to buy, as I said. Uh, kind of curious to see what happens this week. Well, uh, red herring. Uh, you know me, I like to kind of bring up definitions, and I'm a, you know, a web page. Why are my web pages using so much? Why would that web page use so much inform or uh, significant memory? This is ridiculous. Well, anyway, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> red herring. Uh, well, there's two definitions of red herring. A herring cured by salting and slow smoking to a dark brown color. Um, my grandfather used to eat a lot of herring like that. I guess I liked it as a little kid. Too salty for me now. But here's the herring, that red herring we're talking about. The practice of drawing a red herring across a trail to confuse hunting dogs. Something, and, and, and again, the key definition that we're talking about that's pertinent to what I'm talking about, something that distracts attention from the real issues. Um, and I believe that's exactly what we got going on with cryptocurrencies. Uh, cryptocurrencies are a distraction. A uh, distraction from what? A distraction from real money. And what is real money? Gold, silver. Uh, gold and silver, basically. Gold, the... Uh, 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 the money of kings and queens, and silver is the money of the working classes. And uh, both of them are money. They've been money for 5,000 years, despite what these uh, financial talking heads want to tell you. Uh, most of them barely have, uh, uh, gosh, I have shoes older than most of these uh, economic talking heads out there as well. And a lot of the authors and uh, uh, people that write about uh, precious metals who are completely clueless in the corporate world. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, uh, you know, I guess they know what they're talking about as far as equities and bonds, you would think. But uh, when it comes to stocks, I mean, when it comes to gold and silver, they, they're clueless. Uh, again, I digress a little bit here. And what was I talking about? The uh, red herring. I think that uh, Bitcoin cryptocurrencies are red herrings. Now, you know, my, my conspiracy. Now, mind you, I'm telling you outright that, I, you know, this is my conspiracy. Uh, I'm not a stupid guy, though. I don't come up with conspiracies right out of the blue. I don't just sit there and think... Ooh, wouldn't this be cool? This would make a great story. <laughs> you, I, I look at things and, and I put pieces together. I look at puzzles. I look at the big picture. Uh, I, I'm not really, uh, I don't know if there's a proper term, a micro thinker. I'm more of a macro thinker. I, I, I ha I've always had this ability to kind of step out and look at the big picture. Uh, and I've always seen things in a big picture environment. I, for me, uh, and that's how I operate. I'm one of those guys, the big picture guys, that when it comes to little details, uh, that's not my gig. Uh, however, I am good at spotting trends and things like that. And what I did spot with pressure, uh, with uh, the cryptocurrencies is, is I, I think that they're being, I think that uh, Bitcoin or, or, or some of these things, uh, Bitcoin, I believe, is a government agency or some kind of entity out there that created Bitcoin. And I believe the reason for that is to roll out a cashless society, uh, which is something they've been wanting to do for some time. And for you folks that talk about the Great Reset, and there's a lot of people that talk about the Reset. What is the reset? Well, from what I can find out, it can mean many different things. It can be from an extreme, uh, uh, you know, unlikely conspiratorial type thing to uh, uh, more uh, benign, more, uh, what is that the proper word I'm looking for, more more uh, uh, subtle things, you know, like, like uh, trying to roll out a cryptocurrency, you know. Uh, cryptocurrency, that's exactly what I think is going on with it. I think it's just trying to get the younger generations and, gen and the older generations used to uh, a cashless society because I think that's where they're going, folks. First off, uh, in, in a cashless society, uh, there's no worry about taxes anymore because everything is, uh, they, can, they can tax you on every single thing you do. And I'm not saying that you're cheating on taxes, that you, 
you know, that, that people cheat taxes or that people don't pay taxes and all this stuff. We, you know, we all do, especially if you're in business, you have to, you have to cross your T's, dot your I's. Uh, otherwise you're, you know, maybe read, you know, maybe a guy that works for a living that goes out and um, buys and sells a few things and doesn't claim the taxes, but businesses, uh, you can't, you, you just can't uh, cheat on taxes. Otherwise uh, they will get you. Uh, however, uh, the, the small retail guy going out there and buying, selling a couple cars, buying some, selling some coins, uh, buying and selling whatever. You know what I mean? But, you know, homemade products. Maybe your wife makes cookies and sells cookies throughout the year. Do you pay taxes on every bit of that? Um, probably not. And you know, I don't know necessarily. Uh, <laughs> you know, again, I'm not a big fan of taxes. I don't think anyone is. I, I believe it's a, a, a you know. Pfft. I think income tax is a crime, personally, if you ask me, but uh, uh, theft, I think it's theft, but uh, no less, I'm not going to go there, that's for a whole different show. Uh, but, uh, you know, everybody pays taxes to, to, uh, to some degree, but not everybody pays taxes on everything. So, once you get into a crypto world, guess what? Guess what? All of a sudden, that sale of cookies now is recorded. Where did that income come from, says the tax man? Now the tax man has, you know, now that you're not carrying around dollars in your pocket anymore, um, and you're not doing, you know, everything you do now is electronically through the system. Uh, so what that means, like I said, now now when you get audited, the tax man will say, hey, I see uh, $66, or maybe cookies would be $660 by that time, but uh, I see uh, uh, cookies, uh, I see a sale, I see $66. Where did that income from? Where did this income? Trust me, folks, that will happen in a cashless society. It is a great way to uh, create more income for governments uh, uh, by knowing where every little bit of money that you make and you get, and your kids too. Uh, oh, it looks like your kid got some, in, uh, you know, made some income mowing lawns. We want that too. So, and how will they know about that? They'll know about it because it'll be electronic. It'll be a, a form of a cryptocurrency, likely rolled out by central banks. And again, this is my conspiracy, uh, but I believe it. I really do. And it, 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 let me take a look at. Uh, uh, let me kind of read a little couple articles. And what got me into this whole spiel here, and I've talked about this many times, is that. But, uh, I just don't trust it, man. I just, you know, uh, it, you know, as far as contracts go, like Ethereum, you know, from what I've been read, my limited uh, uh, knowledge on this, I like Ethereum and I like these kind of digital things as far as contracts go, being able to record things and, and having them, you know, uh, being recorded for life, and you know, in, in the ether world where it's backed up, you know, a million times. It's you know, I like that idea. I think that there's a great future in the technology of uh, contracts and that kind of thing with with uh, 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 cryptocurrencies. Uh, I, I got to stop calling them currencies because they're not. They're anything but with cryptos. Um, however, uh, as as money, no, I think it's an extremely dangerous thing. Uh, how again, perhaps as a uh, um, a way of like a money market fund. That's kind of what I look at uh, uh, cryptos as right now. It's like a money market fund. I mean, it, I don't think it's a bad thing as that, a place to park your money for a little while. But as as money, uh, you know, I, it's just not money, folks. And uh, uh, I think that uh, uh, the governments would like you to uh, start to look at it as money. Well, <clears throat> not cryptos, bitcoins, and Ethereum, but what they're going to produce and put out as money. And the Fed is working on their own crypto coins. Okay, enough of my, uh, <coughs> excuse me there, let me get a sip of coffee here. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry about that awkward silence. Um, uh, let's get, that again, this is all stuff I've talked about for quite some time. Uh, let's get into the article here, American Institute for Economic Research. And, uh, uh, this talks about uh, uh, the network effect and uh, uh, people adopting coin as money. Uh, really good article. And let's see, there's a little, where is that segment down here? Uh, I have explored the network effect problem for more formally elsewhere, but the key takeaway is straightforward. It is not enough for Bitcoin to be better than the available alternatives. It must be sufficiently better to warrant the cost of switching, which includes the cost of coordinating the switch uh, with others. The network effect is not an insurmountable obstacle. And what is a network effect? Well, without going into turning this into a 45-minute video, uh, the gentleman says that the network effect is when, when everybody recognizes Bitcoin, or not Bitcoin, I keep saying Bitcoin, but when everyone takes a cryptocurrency and it's recognized uh, globally, internationally, domestically, uh, even uh, across the land, as a you know, a, a, as a, uh, a form of uh, uh, money or a transfer form of money. Uh, it, it also the uh, uh, 
uh, again, I'm getting a little tongue-tied here, uh, the network effect he goes into uh, says that you have to have merchants taking it, banks, merchants, and almost everybody across the board needs to trade in this stuff. So, you know, if you've only got a small segment of people out there accepting cryptocurrencies, then uh, uh, the network effect, and that's what the network effect is. He's talking that you have to have a large network of people willing to use this as money. And uh, again, that's the problem I see is that I think that that uh, central governments and I mean central banks and governments are trying to roll out cryptocurrencies as a uh, uh, their own form as a, a, a form of money and they're moving us toward a cashless society and I, I repeat this over and over extremely dangerous you know uh, besides the fact that uh, every sp single penny that you spend will not be private uh, your kids lawn mowing money will be available to the tax money and taxable by the way uh, you go out and get a fine for example for ex oh and then the tax man says you know what you didn't pay tax on uh, on your kids lawn mowing money and you know, penalties come out to probably more than what the uh, lawn mowing money was but penalties are there are a thousand bucks where you're, you're not reporting your kids lawn mowing money uh, maybe you won't even have to report it. Maybe they'll just automatically know and they'll just subtract their amount. That's where I think it's eventually going to go, is a tax man won't even call you. Uh, it'll, you'll, every time you make something, you'll have to enter it into your, your transaction account as, what was that for? Oh, that was my kid's lawnmower money. Oh, great, we'll take our 30% right now. <laughs> That's how it's going to end up. Uh, you know, you go out, you, uh, you, 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 for the younger generation there, they might just be barely making it by, he, you know, uh, a young man in his 20s may have, you know, $500, let's just say $500 in his, uh, in his uh, crypto account, in his government crypto account. He's driving home, uh, he gets a ticket, and the ticket's $700, and before he even starts his car and leaves the scene, that money's out of his bank account already, and he was heading down to pay the electric bill, you know, because he's got a wife and kid to take care of. Imagine these scenarios folks. This is why cryptos are extremely dangerous to accept them as mainstream monies uh, because governments will, they will absolutely take over uh, and that's where they're going to head with this. Mark my words for this. Uh, mark my words on this. Um, and again, I'm not a, I don't have a crystal ball. It's just pretty damn clear when you step outside and look at the big picture where this is headed. Uh, crypto's rapid movement to banking elicits alarms in Washington. Um, <laughs> of course it does. That's exactly what they want to do. They want to introduce it out there to the people. They want to get the young generation all excited and liking it. They want to get people that made money on it. They, they get the uh, baby boomers and the older people, get them make some money on it. Uh, Spin it to them in. Uh, oh, it's the new way. It's the you know it's a new way to uh, uh, transfer money. It's a new money. Uh, get people used to that idea somewhat, uh, and then all of a sudden uh, uh, throw in the uh, regulation, throw in uh, the bad press for the private cryptos, and and talk about how great government cryptos will be. You know, if they only made one, or how great they're going to be. Uh, and then the Washington crowd will say, well, we got to get rid of these private evil cryptos uh, and develop our own because it is a great idea. And, and again, this is where it's going, folks. Uh, they make um, cryptos rapid moving to banking illicit alarms in Washington. Uh, it may be, it, it's purposeful. Uh, and again, this is my conspiracy. It's purposeful right now is to have alarms with private cryptos because, again, it's going to bring in more regulation or ban those. And then what's going to happen is government's going to come and pick up the slack with their uh, central bank credits or whatever the hell they're going to call it. Um, <clears throat> this is no surprise, though. I said that a year, two years ago. I said that uh, uh, Washington and banks, you know, there's two things that uh, politicians and uh, 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 bankers hate, and they hate competition. <laughs> so, and they're not going to tolerate competition. They may let competition sit there for a little bit, you know, copy success, take a look, see how it does. Uh, they may even be the competition, folks. Again, that's my conspiracy that this whole uh, uh, crypto coin was thrown out there as a, a way to get people used to the new reset, and the reset's going to be uh, getting away, to, uh, getting away from cash and turning it into an entirely cashless society. That's where they're headed. They've always wanted that. Um, what else here? Some good articles in uh, GATA.org here. Uh, that's kind of cool. Enormous treasure trove of 6th century gold found in Denmark. Uh, and uh, that's always cool. Of course, me being a new, you know, a coin guy, uh, I like hearing stuff like that. And I also like antiques and jewelry as well. And what else is on here? Uh, Venezuela's new lettuce-based economy is good for now. Um, I kind of looked into that about food shortages, and Venezuela basically has adopted the U.S. dollar now. Isn't that strange uh, for a country? Uh, a socialist or a communist, socialist communist government that that hates the U.S. 
uh, has uh, kind of officially adopted the U.S. dollar. Uh, they're not too proud about it, the government is, but they really had little to no choices. And again, folks, you got to remember how powerful central banks are. You know, people that think that Libya was brought down by uh, its own people, no, Libya was brought down by central banks, uh, as was uh, 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 Venezuela was not brought down by uh, uh, communist or socialist. Uh, I mean, to some degree, they would over time, but Venezuela uh, was taken down by central bankers. Uh, a lot of countries are like that, too. Central bankers are a lot more powerful than you think they are. You know, as soon as uh, as soon as uh, Libya started talking about going off the petrodollar, you know, uh, Gaddafi got a knife stuck up his bum. So, <laughs> uh, so never never buck the trend against central bankers. You know, as far as uh, telling them you don't want to use their goods anymore, uh, because uh, they will stick a knife in your bum. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Maybe a little uncalled for. Uh, my. That, that comment. Uh, let's take a look here. What else? India's August gold imports nearly double from last year, highest in five months. That's great. I mean, that's a, that's good for the markets overall. Uh, people in India, you know, one of the common misnomers that you hear from uh, uh, the, the uh, morons in corporate press that have no clue about precious metals is that, oh yeah, Indian people are buying more jewelry, man. You know, that's where, that's where most of the gold goes is in the jewelry. And uh, they fail to re recognize that the jewelry in India and Pakistan and some uh, eastern countries are considered money, really. It's just a different form of money. Uh, when they buy jewelry in India, it's usually not a double, triple, quadruple markup like it is in the United States and Europe. It's usually a little bit over the gold price. The jewelry is very crude looking. It's made by, uh, in fact, I've sold... Uh, 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 maple leaves to people from India, uh, gold maple leaves that uh, people from India would make into wedding jewelry. Uh, so, um, and again, they, they, they were very price conscious when they were buying it too, and, and the quality of the workmanship and a lot of that stuff is very low, but it, it has nothing to do, I mean, a little bit to do with vanity, but mostly, again, with wealth preservation. So that's why Indian people from India buy gold, wealth preservation. And they've been around for 5,000 years. They got to know a little something. Um, so that, that's where they store their wealth. They don't store it in paper money. And you can't blame them. Uh, you know, really, if you think about it, who wants to store their money in fiat? Not even the central bankers do. Because if you ask yourself and, and you take a look at this picture right here, what do central bankers uh, across the world own? They don't own cryptos. They don't own digital zeros and ones that don't really exist. I mean, they probably love that concept once they're able to run it themselves. Uh, they don't own diamonds, as I said many times. They don't own their own currency, even. You know, that we're still in a, uh, you know, a, a, a currency world. We're not in a cash society yet. There's still cash out there. And they don't even own their own, they don't even own cash per se, right? They give that cash out to you. What do they have in their vaults, folks? Right there. You know it. We know it. Gold is the money of kings and queens. Uh, fiat currency is the money of fools. Uh, silver is the money of the working classes. Uh, again, that's that, I didn't make that up. That's an old saying. Uh, uh, I probably did it a little bit out of order, but central banks do not own their own currencies. They do not own diamonds. They do not own central banks own gold. They covet gold. Why is that? Well, I don't know. I'll let you. Uh, I'll let you come up with that answer. It's pretty damn obvious that they uh, go through great lengths to own it and get more of it. Uh, they're not selling it off. They're getting again, and they're increasing the amount of gold they own. Meanwhile, they pawn off the fiat on us. They pawn off the credit bubbles. They pawn off all the things that uh, they make money on and their buddies make money on. They don't want you sitting on gold, folks. Uh, they want to sit on the gold, but they don't want you sitting on it. If you're sitting on uh, precious metals, bars or coins um, in silver or gold, uh, it means you're not, that money is not participating in their games, okay? And they can't steal it from you. Uh, so that's why they don't want you sitting on uh, gold and uh, or gold and silver because, again, it's out of their greedy little paws at that point. And uh, for, who knows for how long. Say so it's out of the paws of their uh, Wall Street buddies, too, because their Wall Street buddies can't churn your accounts. If you're sitting on gold and silver bars in your house, how are they going to make money? They can't make a dime off that. So for every dollar stored inside your home or wherever your hiding place is with gold and silver, that's a dollar you've taken away from them, and they hate that, folks. Trust me on that. Uh, and that's why there's such monkey hammering with precious metals out there. They store it. They monkey hammer it down. They load up their vaults with more gold. Uh, meanwhile, uh, telling you not to buy it and trying to give you the illusion that, uh, oh, gosh, you should be in other places. You should be in the stock market. You should be in the housing market. You should be in... 
Bullshit, folks. That's the markets that they make money. That's the markets they man and they manipulate you into so that they can uh, steal your money from you. And again, I'm not saying those markets are bad, but uh, they encourage you to play continually in those markets. They don't encourage you uh, to put away gold, uh, which they put away themselves. Why is that? Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't banks, central banks across the globe, why wouldn't they, if they really cared about you and I, and they really cared about us, why wouldn't they tell us to do the same thing they're doing? Why? All right, I'll leave it at that. So, uh, melt up the mid month. Let's look at uh, some uh, zero hedge stuff here. And uh, I'm not going to read this whole thing. Melt up. What does a melt up look like? Good article done by uh, via Real Investment Advice. I like their articles too. It's on ZH. You can read it for free. Uh, a melt up is a sustained and unexpected improvement in the markets, driven partly by a stampede of investors who don't want to miss out on its rise, rather than by fundamental improvement in the economy. Gains that a melt-up creates are considered to be unreliable. Indications of the direction of the market is ultimately headed. Melt-ups often precede meltdowns. And this is in the, oh, God, they even used Investopedia. Love that. That's where I actually should have looked for that. Um, so uh, it appears that we're in a melt-up, and we've been in a long melt-up so far with the equities and uh, stock, you know, stock market and such. Even the housing market has been in a uh, uh, long melt uh, uh, melt up. People are just afraid of missing out, so they're they're throwing their money in that. And again, if central bankers were really concerned about us, why wouldn't they tell us to back off from buying those risky ask and uh, you know investments without fundamentals? That includes the housing market, folks. There's just no reason why that stuff's so expensive right now, um, other than that they've just driven the price of these assets up. They're making a fortune off them. Bank governments get to tax you for all these things that you buy that they're aware of. You know, because every investment dollar you spend is uh, known to them. Every you know, you buy a house, that's known to them. Uh, these are all taxable things that governments love, and it's all the things that bankers and central bankers and their Wall Street buddies love because they're, they're things that they can churn, they can make money off you. And then when the markets get real heated off, they can lay off their positions and stick you in them uh, instead of themselves. So, And uh, again, I don't trust these suckers, uh, if you ask me. But uh, God, I went off track again. Sorry about that. So a melt up. That's what a melt up is when you hear the term melt up. Um, what else is on here? Uh, VIX reversal. This is more technical, and as I told you, I'm more of a macro looker, so I'm not going to go into the technical aspects of this, what's happening with VIX. Uh, VIX is a volatility index, by the way. And if you want to read this, again, it's free, and uh, it's done by Real, uh, Real Investment Advice, who wrote this uh, really interesting article, worth, worth the look, uh, if you like the technical aspects of this stuff. Uh, quick look over ZH to see what's going on, because again, I like ZH only because it's an uh, alternative uh, different thought processes, opinions, and narratives, unlike corporate news, which feeds you one single opinion and one narrative, uh, which is usually the ones that governments and central banks want you to believe. Uh, so that's not good right there. Uh, that's just going to heat things up, good for precious metals. And uh, Goldman, here, this is what I was going to look at. Uh, Goldman, who seems to know what they're doing since they are... Uh, like Goldman's in bed with the government, more or less. They they are a government entity. There's no doubt about it in my mind. They're employ, you know, the CEOs uh, either work for the Treasury Department, have worked for the Treasury Department, or going to go work for the Treasury Department. Uh, that's the way it works with Goldman Sachs. They are a government entity, and and they say they cut its GDP forecast for a third time in the past month. Uh, so, folks, uh, the fact that well, then again, you can't always trust what Goldman says. Do you know? Uh, do as I say, not as I do. So, uh, but it is interesting that they did cut the U.S. GDP forecast. I can't see how they would benefit from doing that, uh, lying about that. Uh, so that's very interesting news right now, and good for precious metals extremely well. Make sure you uh, start getting into this stuff pretty soon, folks, if you haven't bought in yet. Again, that's just my opinion. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not pretending to be, but I do know this market. I've been doing it since 1977, uh, and I'm a second-generation dealer in precious metals and uh, rare coins. Well, let's take a look at yesterday's article and uh, yesterday's article, Friday. God, it seems a long time since Friday. It has been. It's been three days. Nice long week for all of us folks here. Uh, Friday's video was game over. Um, and uh, basically, I was just talking about uh, similar to what we were talking about today. So uh, let me go over some questions here in uh, comments. Uh, thanks for watching, all you folks right here, obviously. And uh, Jeremy Barton says, I picked up five ounces today for my local Lakeland coin store. Uh, is it happen to be Hauser's uh, uh, coin and stamp or Hauser's in Lakeland? Because I know Nick Hauser. He's a super nice guy. If you guys live in Lakeland, Nick, uh, tell him I said hi. But uh, also, uh, 
uh, uh, Nick's one of the good guys out there. So if he's in your local area and he's in Lakeland, I'd recommend you go see Nick at uh, Hauser's Coin and Stamp. Uh, if I'm wrong about that, I'm sorry, Jeremy. <laughs> I didn't mean to drive business to another coin store from where you go. But uh, I do happen to know uh, he's one of the best ones in that area. Uh, thanks for watching, and that sounded like a good price, sir. Uh, G says, Happy Labor Day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Joey. Good morning. And uh, um, government spending, runaway spending. Yep, that was kind of lengthy but interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here I'd like to discuss more that is lengthy and interesting. But man, we could we could do these videos could go on for hours and people would just get bored as hell. Uh, hey, thanks for watching, Joey. I appreciate it. Uh, over 10k cash. Ca Doctor uh, Dogwell Hunt says over 10,000 cash per transaction purchases or sales reported in my state. Um, 10,000 is the uh, uh, cash reporting law only. A lot of people confuse the cash reporting law uh, as being. Uh, uh, it's only when you, if you spend ten thousand dollars in cash with a merchant, the merchant over ten thousand, the merchant is required to fill out. I believe it's an eighty-three hundred form. Uh, we limit all our sales to ten thousand. We don't take over ten thousand on anything. Uh, we do checks after that, but that's our local policy here. Uh, but I believe over ten thousand, you have to fill out an eighty-three hundred form, and it's basically the old drug reporting laws. You know, back in the day in the eighties. Uh, that's where that uh, $10,000 reporting law came from. And a lot of people don't realize this. Uh, it doesn't even have to be 10000 The limit is no longer 10000 And if, if a merchant thinks that something's suspicious uh, and, and it's under 10000 he can still file an 8300 So if you went into the bank and you put uh, over 10000 you deposit over 10000 cash with the bank or, or some business and they didn't like you <laughs> or they thought you were a jerk or something, they can file a suspicious activities report and an 8300 So it's not just 10 folks. Uh, it can be any amount. And as far as you buying um, or selling, uh, there's no limit. There's no limit. There's no uh, 8300s filled out. So if you went in to sell to a dealer and he paid you 20000 in cash, uh, there's no you, you ha you're required to the reporting, not the dealer on that point. Uh, but uh, uh, there's no 8300s on that side of the sale. Uh, hope that kind of clears things up there a little bit. Uh, thanks for watching, Dr. Doggo Hunt, Jeremy Barton, uh, Roy Peter. I like to thank you guys. I appreciate you all watching. Jaw boning. Uh, hey, thank you. I, I guess I do jaw bone a lot. <laughs> jaw boning. Oh, I like that word. Uh, thanks for watching, Roy. Bill says, I heard the Russians kicked the central bank of the country. Um, no, no, the Russians have their own central banks. So, I mean, they're run by central banks, and their, their central banks own lots of gold, too. What do you think they have in their vaults? Not rubles. They got uh, gold bars, and they've been building up for quite some time because uh, uh, they were worried about getting, out, getting kicked out of the uh, U.S. banking system. Russia's been preparing that for a long time when the U.K. and, and the United States uh, weaponized the dollar against them and say, all right, you guys are cut out. Uh, which could screw them like it screwed Venezuela. Look what the central bankers did to Venezuela. Uh, Russia was worried about uh, uh, U.S. and U.K. central banks doing the same thing to them. Uh, so they've stockpiled gold and they've created their own little environment where they don't have to entirely rely on the dollar, although it would hurt them. China's doing the same thing. Again, that's all a result of the weaponization of the U.S. dollar that uh, we did years and years ago, which really screwed us in the, in the long run, or sucks overall, folks. We should just try to get along with everybody. The best thing the United States could do is be a peacemaker like Switzerland right now. Say, hey, listen, as long as you don't hurt us and you don't hurt others. We don't mind what you do. You can park all your money you want here. We should be a low tax country. We should go back to what Switzerland, what made Switzerland great. Um, you know, privacy and low taxes, 100% uh, in my opinion. Uh, we'd be the greatest uh, country on earth again, I think, if we did that. And we backed our money with gold. <laughs> I'm asking too much now. Uh, thanks for watching, Bill. Appreciate it. Uh, Michael Matthews, yeah, I do say that. Going to be a short show. You know, it's funny too. Sometimes I do these videos and I'm completely blank. I'm saying, oh, God, this is going to be quick. I don't even know what to talk about. Then all of a sudden the engine starts turning. It's like momentum, like a snowball going downhill, and I just won't shut up. <laughs> hey, thanks for Michael. Uh, thanks for watching, Mike. I appreciate it. And uh, uh, sorry about the long video. I, and I'll try not to say it'll be a short video and, until the end of the show. <laughs> so uh, thanks. Uh, Chris, appreciate you watching as well, and I don't mind educating anyone here. That's the whole purpose of this video. Uh, I'm here to make money with my local customers, obviously. Uh, I'm a local dealer. I don't deal online, as you know, so uh, uh, I'm here to make money. I'm here to bring new customers into my business. And one of the reasons I started doing these videos, I was thinking, well, God, when I get new customers in, a lot of them come in and they want to talk about, you know, 
uh, it takes a while to educate people and give them my viewpoints and stuff. And this video is a perfect way to do that. Listen to a few of my videos and you'll 100% know a lot more than uh, you would if you just walked in on the blind in my store. And it saves me time. It saves my customers time. It makes them smarter. Uh, makes them uh, uh, kind of get a better feel for what they want to purchase, what the best deals are. Um, and again, it really does. Time is money. So uh, I, I do these videos to uh, educate my customers. Uh, so when they come in to buy from me, again, the whole hope is that they come in to buy from me. I make, you know, I'm, I'm a businessman. I'm here to sell stuff. Uh, but to educate them before they come in, I think it's an educated customer is the best customer. No doubt in my mind about that. And in fact, I should have just left it at that. Uh, for any local uh, coin dealers out there, educate your customers uh, because it'll make sales so much better. It'll make your customers uh, so much better. Uh, their purchases will be way better, you know, if you educate them. And uh, uh, they'll like the business more, and they'll stay around longer, and there's loyalty involved with that as well. I could go on forever, but uh, thanks for watching, Chris. I appreciate it. Uh, cantankerous Chris. Oh, okay, so uh, Chris Fetters and Cantankerous Chris. i got a couple Chris's here. Uh, the hunch just happened to be the most involved monetarily. There were a lot of players. Uh, I was 18. Yeah, we're about the same age, sir. Uh, so my childhood coin collecting started stacking again in the 90s. I bought a 23 cent guns for $385. There you go. And silver eagles at seven bucks each. Yeah, I remember those. And 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 cantankerous Chris, you know, I don't know if we're going to be around long enough, you know, that you know, 30 years from now, but um, we'll say the same thing. I, I don't think it's going to be that long in the future where where we're going to look at uh, uh, $1,800 and $2,000 gold like we looked at $385 gold then. And uh, we're going to look at $30 silver like we look at $7 silver now. It's going to happen. It's just, you know, it's it definitely going to happen. Thanks for watching, uh, Chris. I appreciate it. And, oh, yeah, Chris, uh, uh, the other Chris, Mr. Fetters. Uh, please let us know when to trade our 90% in for a better deal. I saw that comment on Friday. And just to give you a quick mention here, there is really... <clears throat> There is really not a great, let me just take a look here. Uh, there is really not a great advantage yet. Now, you folks out there can trade your 90% probably for 100 ounce bars, uh, and you'd make about 25 cents an ounce at most. Nah, not even that, doggone it. Uh, no, Chris, it's not that point yet because the, the wholesale bids haven't gone beyond the uh, wholesale ask prices for any of the particular products. Uh, however, uh, I think that 90% is too expensive right now. So uh, there are better deals out there, and I'll get into that in a moment. Thanks for watching, Chris. Uh, Rich says, like my show. Thank you, uh, sir. Informative, is straightforward and no bull. Uh, yeah, and I do meander sometimes, and I digress, and I do all that other stuff. But it is pretty much unscripted. So for all my screw-ups and everything, I'd like to say uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, again, it is what it is. Uh, but I have fun with this, and I hope you folks are having fun too. Uh, thanks for watching, Rich. Tree Climber, we are, we, are, we are where most founding fathers and Andrew Jackson didn't want. Yeah, well, we are where the bankers are running. Again, this whole show is kind of uh, talks about that uh, uh, central bankers and manipulation of uh, the people and manipulation of currencies and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. We are exactly where the founding fathers and Andrew Jackson didn't want us, where the central banks around the world. Uh, it's a shame. Uh, thanks for watching again. Sonny Jim says, I'm tap, spent over three grand and averaging 30 bucks an ounce. Uh, good for you. As I said, Sonny Jim, I think that at some point you're going to look back at $30 silver and go, wow, that was cheap. I wish I had borrowed more money to buy more. Uh, I'm not saying to do that too. So <laughs> I don't want to get into the point where I advise people on here to buy or sell or to jump into this market. I'm only trying to educate you on what I know about this market and, uh, 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 you know, uh, my experiences with it. So if you can if you can learn from that and make money off that uh, or not lose money off that, great. Uh, thanks for watching, Sonny Jim. I really appreciate it. Uh, oh, and you should own some gold if you can, uh, unless you already own some gold. Uh, tree Climber, yeah, I did figure that out. I didn't click it, but I did figure it out. <laughs> thanks a lot. I appreciate that. I guess I need to delete those if it matters. Uh, Watch for Eagles, Watchful Eagle says Niagara Falls. Canada checking in. Awesome. I got to get up there sometime. Um, my girlfriend has been dying to go up there, dying to go up there. She's been asking me to go up to Niagara Falls for a long time. So I think as soon as all this nonsense blows over and travel becomes, you know, less restrictive uh, and moving around becomes less restrictive, uh, I'm definitely going to come up and visit you guys up there. Hey, thanks for watching uh, Watchful Eagle. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, sir. You're awesome, too. What's most awesome about these videos are the commenters. They really are. I appreciate all the commenters and my viewers out there. Yeah, which reminds me, if you're new to this, make sure you hit that like button up there and hit the, uh, hit the subscribe button, too. I appreciate that. And feel free to share my videos 
Uh, even if you don't live in my area, share them with other people because hopefully there's something I can uh, uh, pass on and, and teach people that uh, uh, are buying precious metals and stuff. So, uh, Silver Loving Lou says, thanks, Brian. Love my content. Uh, gosh, you guys got to give me a big head. Thank you, Silver Lou. I appreciate that. Uh, Bam Paris is hard to find anything for less than $30. If you do find it, buy it. I've still got plenty of product available, Bam. Uh, there's some good deals out there. And again, I'll get into that in just a moment when I do my buy local thing. Uh, Billy Hurst, thank you, sir. Dan Fowler, uh, what foreign currency will rise? Uh, in, sir, that is completely out of my expertise. I, I haven't a clue. I don't know much about uh, uh, currency markets and uh, uh, you know that kind of stuff. So I couldn't even tell you what foreign currencies will rise. Um, I think if any of them are not backed by gold, none of them will rise. I think they're all uh, eventually doomed to fail unless they're backed by gold or silver. Uh, again, that's my opinion. Uh, Brian says it's okay to hate the CCP. Yeah, you're right. Um, I, you know, I love uh, the Chinese people. I love the Russian people. I've loved people I've met from all countries that were considered our enemies. Uh, I find that what I really didn't like is their governments. And, you know, I got to tell you, I don't like ours sometimes either. So um, uh, I, I love China. I love its people. I love the country. It's beautiful. It's huge. It's diverse, culturally rich. Uh, it's just their communist government that uh, sucks. Uh, but again, I don't. I think uh, anybody that would uh, uh, point out the speck in uh, someone's eye without pointing out the plank in their own, uh, which means really, before we start criticizing other governments, maybe we should take a hard look at our own. Uh, thanks for watching, Brian. I really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I grew up in that time too. Uh, John Powell says, uh, I see a default. Uh, I don't know where we can go. They were saying closed markets. I'm still buying a ton of long dated out of money puts. I'm on getting 13% in savings. Yeah, yeah, it was a different time. Uh, and funny, they say that, oh, you know, uh, if interest rates rise and, uh, and uh, uh, rates go up, gold should go down. But, you know, John, you remember 1980, gold was around 800 bucks and, and savings accounts, like you said, were almost 13%. So that that uh, uh, narrative that, that if interest rates go up, that gold has to go down is complete, utter bullshit. And the people that repeat that are, are full of shit and don't know what they're talking about. And that's typically corporate media that repeats that, uh, that narrative. And you know what? If you repeat a lie enough times, some people start to believe it. Unless, of course, you're smart like us. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching, John. I appreciate it. Um, I have an old ceiling money. What's the ceiling money? Of course, I'd like to buy anything that's legal and I can make a few bucks on. Give me a call sometime. Oi, oi. Oi, tins. Appreciate you uh, watching there. Uh, Carl says, I don't think prices will go up now. Um, CCP efforts all over the globe are done in the gain of function types, areas with untouched minerals. Uh, these people will take your children, never mind, let you have bullion. Uh, I think that, uh, uh, yeah, definitely there's that one China view or there's this uh, view that they have in China to become a superpower. And, you know, and you can't blame them, really. It's not China, the Chinese people's fault. You know, if, if your government's raw wrong, saying, hey, listen, we're, we'll make you all rich and you're all going to have lots of money and lots of this or that. Uh, we'll make your life so much better. And, you know, you're going to a lot of people are going to believe their governments. I mean, our government does that, too, as, as well. Uh, however, as I just said, Love the people of China, love the people of Russia, Venezuela, uh, love the people I've met from Pakistan and Iran and Iraq. I've met a lot. You know, we, we live in a mixing pot here. These are wonderful people. It's the governments, folks. It's the governments. And again, before we start throwing stones at governments, we better fix our own first. Uh, thanks for watching, Carl. I appreciate that. Greg, hey, what's up? Thumbs up to you, too. Now we ride. God, it reminds me I want to go out my motorcycle now. <laughs> I agree all governments suck, but all people are in the same boat. Exactly, exactly, exactly. We're all in the same boat, um, and I think the best thing to do is live by example. Fix our problems first, and then go out and uh, point out the problems of other people. Well, hold on, and then go try to help other people fix their problems the proper way. Uh, well, that's really about it. I made, managed to make this song, uh, video a little bit song, video a little bit longer than normal. You better hope I don't start singing. A <laughs> uh, little bit longer than normal, uh, but no less. You know, like I said, it's like a snowball. I don't know what I'm going to say, and then it just, pff, who knows what comes out my mouth sometimes. All right, thanks for watching, folks. Uh, this is a point where I tell you that I'm a local dealer only, so if you don't live in uh, uh, South Florida, I can't deal with you, unfortunately. I don't do any online sales or shipping. So... Uh, I advertise to be at MexJM and SD. This is for my local peeps. Uh, this way you don't have to shop online. You can shop with me. Uh, the advantages of that is you'll get a better price than you will from the big online sellers. You'll get better advice. Uh, and you'll get the loyalty of myself and my employees and my business uh, who will always be here for you.
So uh, that's my advice. And if you don't live in my particular area, I advise you find a local dealer, do the same thing, keep that money local. Uh, and local dealers should be able to beat the online sellers as far as uh, um, uh, good product goes. They should be able to. Uh, and if you can't find one in your town, go look in the county. If you can't find one in the county, go look in the state. Uh, again, highly recommend you keep that money local and you buy local. And not just coins and bullion, but car, you know, you name it, everything, cars, jewelry, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, try to buy local when you can. I've cut my Amazon purchases down substantially. Uh, again, I'd rather keep the money local than send it out of state and make someone else rich uh, out of state where we'll never see any of the benefits of that. Um, well, that's really about it, folks. Appreciate you watching. And uh, this is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins. And there goes the phones again in beautiful Ottawa by the sea. For my local peeps, call me anytime at 954-493-8811 between the hours of 10 and 4. Mondays through Fridays, happy to help you out with whatever you need. Hey, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button as well. And uh, hey, thanks again, folks. Really appreciate it. Talk to you later. Bye.